Thank you for joining us. Samuel Kamandamu with English No Fun How. Stay with us. Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, hosted a dinner for construction workers. The Premier hosted a dinner for more than 1,450 young construction workers deployed on renovating the Palace of Prime Minister of Ethiopia. The youth who are engaged in the National Palace project are begun spending several hours during their day and night work working hard to expedite the project. The Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Dr. Habi Ahmed, commended them for their commitment and dedication to work hard and highlighted that they are role models for the generation of youth in Ethiopia. Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia released a statement for the situation of Ethiopian nationals residing in South Africa. Fikadu Prahan explains. Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia released a statement for the situation of Ethiopian nationals in South Africa. The ministry condemned the heinous act of violence and looting of properties perpetrated against foreigners, including Ethiopian citizens in South Africa. The ministry said we are encouraged by the statement of President of the Republic of South Africa, Sarlene Rabafosa, denouncing these acts of violence and his promise to arrest perpetrators and bring them to justice. Adding, we would also like to see continued and robust measures taken by South African authorities to contain the violence and ensure Ethiopian citizens' security and safety. The Ethiopian embassy in Pretoria is closely working with authorities and members of the community to address the situation. Besides, the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mohamed, condemned in the strongest terms the incidents of violence against nationals of fellow African countries in South Africa, including the looting and destruction of their property. In a statement, he called for further immediate steps to protect the lives of people and their property, ensure that all perpetrators are brought to account for their acts and that justice be done to those who suffered economic and other losses. The chairperson reiterated the Commission's continued commitment to support the South African government in addressing the root causes that led to despicable acts in order to promote peace and stability within the framework of African Union's long-standing principles of continental solidarity. Meanwhile, South Africa's president condemned days of widespread looting and arson attacks on foreign-owned businesses across Johannesburg and the capital Pretoria, calling the violence totally unacceptable. He said, we do not allow and cannot tolerate attacks on people from other African countries. Police have arrested more than 100 people in five areas impacted by the violence. Police Minister Behek Sel confirmed that five people had died since the violence started on Sunday night. The Ethiopian embassy in South Africa advised citizens to close their shops until peace is restored. According to Ethiopian media and Zambia's Ministry of Transport and Communications warned Zambian truck drivers not to travel into the country. Nigerian President Mahamudu Buhari said he has dispatched a special envoy to South Africa to convey his concerns to President Ramaphosa. Ministry of Innovation and Technology says it is working to empower women in technology. The ministry has graduated 25 female trains trained in database and job creation program. Let us Teresa present us. Ministry of Innovation and Technology of Ethiopia has graduated 25 female students that had trained for three months in database development and job creation program through collaborating with Intoto Fellowship and Canadian government. On the occasion, Minister of Innovation and Technology Dr. Engineer Gaton Makura said his ministry is carrying out various activities to enhance women's participation in research and studies as well as job opportunity creation. The last four years is a challenge to bring female researchers and female technologists into the economy. So uh, it's been four years now since the government decided to invest in uh, research and technology transfer. And in the Ministry of Science and Technology and the Ministry of Innovation and Technology, we always encourage female researchers to come up with ideas, with proposals, with with something deliverable. And I think two years back, finally, we had, a we had a very serious problem that we are not getting as many female researchers as we wanted to support. 
The minister extended his gratitude to government of Canada for supporting the project. Canadian ambassador to Ethiopia Anthony Chevrolet for his part noted that the two countries share long-term economic friendship. The ambassador said his country will continue to support Ethiopia's economic growth plan. All uh, towards the same ob common objective, which is to generate sustainable growth, but also generate and create employment for the youth in Ethiopia. And we all know the numbers. The numbers are pretty daunting, and the challenge is is a challenge, and it's a big one, uh, with so many young people entering the labor force per year. And certainly Canada and the embassy uh, is, is, is proud to be uh, supportive of um, the economic growth of the country, and we're doing our best and want to be as aligned as possible to the priorities of the government. Of course, we're aligned to the reform process and the reform package of the government led by Dr. Abiy. Uh, but we're also uh, proud of the results we can generate for, uh, for young Ethiopians. Some trainees Oben Tokto said they have got knowledge from the training, even they hoped that it will create job opportunity for them. Online ticket the reservation system. It's called online ticket reservation system. We have worked on it. The clients pay for us only five Ethiopian per. Then after they can deposit their money online through CB Bank or the bank in their vicinity. They can use our system just like this. The trainees are able to develop data base that fast than hospital services, store research soft copies, save time and money spent during taking transportation tickets. Film Fitness City Administration disclosed that it has so far raised over 7.2 million notebooks from different volunteers. Vice Mayor of the City, F Vice Mayor of Film Fitness City, Injil Takalauma, noted that the city administration is working to raise notebooks to needy students in their city. Aguila Tatarisa Smolnats. Foreign government and non-governmental organizations have donated educational equipment for more than 9 million birth to students of Infinite City Administration. We thank you for giving us notebooks. We want to contribute to our country's development after we completed our education. I'd like to extend my gratitude to you all in the name of God for offering us these old things. Deputy Mayor of Infinite City City engineer Takele Uma has expressed his heartfelt gratitude to the donors. God bless you. This equipment will help the student to attend their class without worrying about it. So thank you very much indeed. The mayor pointed out that uniform has been prepared and some schools have also been revamped for the upcoming new academic year. According to the mayor, the city administration had planned to collect 7.2 million exercise books for the poor students that learn at public schools in the capital, but it was possible to achieve beyond what was planned. Meanwhile, youth of Sulta town have also granted educational equipment to 432 displaced Roma students who sheltered in the town. Mayor of the town, Abirawar, applauded the exemplary deed of the Solota town youth. The youth have vowed to continue taking part in such works. The Ethiopian Environment, Forest and Climate Change Commission announced that it is to reorganize bamboo development strategy yet again. East African Bamboo Development Conference has been held in Finfinne City. I just have more on that. As of noted by Commission of Natural Resource, Forest and Climate Change, Ethiopia is the leading bamboo plant producer in Africa. Ethiopia has suitable weather conditions for bamboo plantation. Bamboo is a tropical plant that is a member of grass family, characterized by growing faster and multiplying itself when people cut it down. Bamboo has ample function in human endeavor. People use it to build houses, to design furniture, to make household equipment, and many more. With reference to bamboo plantation, a conference is undertaken in Finfinne City on East African countries. The conference is being undertaken to increase awareness on the multiple function of bamboo. Deputy Commissioner of Natural Resource, Forest and Climate Change of Ethiopia, Kabada Imam, stated during the session that policy and strategy of bamboo plantation development would be effective in the upcoming year. 
On this policy and strategy session, we've planned to develop bamboo planters on 200,000 hectares and safeguard the existing bamboo on 200,000 hectares too. The proposed bamboo plantation project that will be undertaken in 2019 and 2020 would create a huge job opportunity pool. <laughs> While we develop bamboo, we need 500,000 male youth and female youth and they got their wage through the income that we generate from bamboo development. Participant of the discussion told that utilizing bamboo would help a lot for the people in the country. In our region, we have a huge resource in our land. It helps more than gold and other minerals, especially in West Romia, It is found abundantly. It was not rendering us service before, but now we would work on it intensively. We have talked to an entrepreneur who fully engaged to bamboo plant products, and he told us he is exporting his products abroad. I'm exporting cartain to Sudan, Djibouti, Taiwan, in Cyprus, flip all up to India. It created a job opportunity for others, he added. We've created a job for many people. We are working with more than 300 farmers as a client. These farmers provide us with fresh bamboo, especially from the range in RC and Sedama. Residents of Taltale district of Boranazon said they are constructing 56 km gravel road to connect with neighboring villages that enhance the socioeconomic development. All my by small that. Residents of Taltale district of Boranazon say that they have been constructing gravel road to interconnect the villages in the district so as to ease socioeconomic challenges they have been suffering from due to absence of roads. We've decided to construct this road to solve the problems we've been facing due to absence of road that connects us with various villages and districts. We've collected money and received a machine which help us to construct the road. Now we are in a good progress, but covering the road with gravel is a little bit difficult and needs further help. The residents have requested the government to support them to finalize the construction of the road. Public participation process owner with Taltale District Roads Authority, Gahandi Kiptano, say that the government has been working to solve road access problems of the district. Head of Taltale District Roads Authority, Johannes Bogale, for his part, say that the public has been eagerly working to solve their problems problems by themselves. Residents of the district have planned to invest more than 6 million birds to construct gravel road to connect various villages. They have been doing this understanding that constructing road has greater role in improving their life standard.